Hello everybody, welcome back to Code Talk with Profanis. There are many times where we have to share state from a parent routed component to children route components. In this video, we will explore how to achieve that by four possible ways. Without any further delay, let's get started. So let's first see what the application looks like. Here I have a list of products and if I click any of the product, let's say product 11, we can see that here we have the product details page, product 11, this is a description for product 11, a random price, and then we have here the left side navigation, where we have the sale, season, style, and color. And now, let's go to VS Code to see what this application looks like. And I would like to start with a main TS file, where here we have the product detail component, which is the parent routed component, and then we have the children routes, where we have the sale component, season, style, and color. Nice. So let's now go to the product detail to see what we have. If I go here, the only thing that I currently have is a product service, and then I'm using a product resource utilizing the Rx resource. And if you would like to see more about the Rx resource, and especially about the HTTP resource, you can find a link into the comments below where you can see a video that I recently uploaded. And now if I go to the HTML, what we can see is that uh, here I just have the product where I'm getting the value of that product resource and into the condition here into the card, the only thing that I have is the product title, the description and the price. No more than that, it's a very simple card. Now let me collapse that and let's see now what we have here, which is the left side navigation where I have the sale, season, style, and color. And what would happen at the time that we're clicking any navigation item? Since they are the children routes, we expect to be rendered into a nested router outlet, which is here. And the idea of this video is to share the same state, and I mean the state of the product resource from the parent component, which is the product detail, to the rest of the children routed components. And we'll start with a very common pattern, which is utilizing a service. And this is something that we'll do for the sale component, and then we'll use a resolver. We will also see a custom injection token, and then we'll see how to use the router outlet data. So let's start with the service. So let's first go to the product detail component and what we need to have first is the actual service so that we can keep that state there. I have already prepared a service for this one and the name is product state. And the only thing that I have is a private product which is a writable signal. The default value is null. And then into the public one, I'm returning the signal as read only because I don't want someone outside of this service to mutate my product. The responsibility of mutating this product is only from the product state. And we do that by using, by exposing the set product method. So let's go back now to the product detail component. And since we know that the product resource return a value as a signal, we can utilize an effect. So here I will just add a constructor and into the constructor, I will add an effect. And then I will do the following. I will simply have a const product, which is this dot product resource dot value. And I know that this is a signal, so I will invoke that. And then a sibling condition. If product is truthy, then what I would like to do is to grab this product and move that state to the service. So I will have to use, oh, you know what? I forgot to inject my state. So let's go here. I have a private product state equals, and then let's inject the actual product state. And now let's continue into my effect, and I will have to do this dot product state, and I have a method there, set product, and I'm providing the actual product. Nice. So this is the very first step. So let me close that, and let's now go into the main, and let's follow the definition of this cell component. So now we have to do the same thing into the cell component, meaning that we have to inject the product state. So let's do that. And then 
my actual product will be this dot product state and I have to grab my product. I can even use that as is without invoking the signal so that I can use my signal into the HTML and this will contribute to the signal graph. So now having the product here, I can go into my HTML and simply have this kind of thing. Nice. So let's now go to the browser to see what we actually have. This is my product 11 and if I click the sale, we can see now that we have the JSON of the selected product. To see that this actually works, let's go to the list of products and let's select another one and I will go to product 9. So product 9 here and if I click sale, we can see that we actually have the correct product using a service. Nice. So this is a very common way of how to share state between different components. Now let's see another way of how to share a state using a resolver. Since you now need to share the state using a resolver, what you have to do is to remove the actual code from the product detail component. And I mean that we don't need to have the product service here nor the product resource. And we have to move this kind of logic into our resolver. At first, let's go into the main TS and have here my resolve. And then I would like here to have a product and the product will return the actual resolver. And like what I said previously, let's have that side by side. I will grab the product service and I will move that here. And this is a const. And then we need also to grab the actual ID. And when I mean to grab the ID, I mean this kind of ID. And I know that the resolver has the route and this is the activated route snapshot like the copilot suggested. Awesome. So let's now have const product ID, which is my route paramap get ID. Nice. And since we have now the service here and the product ID, all we have to do is, again, like what the copilot suggested, is to use the product service, get product, and then we are providing the product ID here. And I added also the exclamation mark because I know that I will always have an ID. And the problem now is that the argument of type string is not assignable to parameter of type number. So let's convert that to a number. Awesome. Now we expect to grab the actual product using the resolver. So let's now go into the product detail component, which is this guy. And like what we said, we no longer need to have these two. So I will comment this out. And what I need now to do is to grab the product from the activated route. So I will have here my private activated route and I will inject my activated route. And you know what? I will just go and be like, I would like to have my snapshot data. And I know that into my data, I will have the product. And this product is the one that we have actually here. So now I have my product and this actually is not an activated product. This is my product. Nice. So now I have to go into my HTML. And if you remember previously, we had the product resource, but we no longer have that. And we actually have a public product into my component. So it's enough to have the rest of the logic as is. So it seems that we are done with the changes into the product detail component. Now let's go and do the same thing. I mean to implement a different logic, but this time into the season component. So I have the season here and the product detail component here. And as you can see into the product detail component, we're activating the route component and we'll have to do the same thing. I will copy this line into the season component and I will paste it here. Awesome. But please note the following that we do not have to grab the data from the snapshot, but we have to grab the snapshot from the parent. So we have now the parent snapshot data product. Why the parent? If we go to the main TS, we can see that this is the children and the resolver has been set into my parent component. That's why we have to go to the parent and pick it up. And now into the season component, if I go into the HTML 
and actually we expect this to work. So let's now go to the browser and see what will happen if we click the season. And it seems that we successfully provided the selected product into the season using the resolver. So let's do one more try. I will pick now product 12 and we can see that we have product details. And if I click season, we can see that we have the correct product here. Nice. So let's now see another way of how to share the state by using a custom injection token. Well, I have reverted all the changes back and into the product details component, what we can see is that we have the service and we have the resource. And if I go to the HTML, again, we have here the product resource dot value. So that we have, let's say, a clean state and start the implementation with the custom injection token. And since we now need to have a custom injection token, let's create that. So here I will have, let's say, my product equals to new injection token. Let's import from Angular Core. And we will talk about now the type of this one. So for now, let's keep that as null or any whatever. We don't care about that. We will fix that later. And now let's start the, the interesting part. So here I will add my providers. And what I want to do is to provide the token that I have just created, which is the product. Nice. So. I will now need to have a use factory and into the factory, I will have the actual logic. And the idea here is into the factory to provide the instance of the product details component, the actual instance of the component, and from that component, pick the product's resource. So let's do that here. So here I will have my product details component. And what I have to return is the product details component dot product resource dot. I can return the value, but you know what? I would prefer to return the resource as is. And the type here is resource ref of product. So I will copy this and I will now go to my custom injection token and replace this guy. Let's import this import this as well. And now let's continue uh, into our provider. So whenever we're using the use factory, we expect something to be injected here. But to do that, we have to provide the dependencies. And the dependencies for this token is the actual component. So now the product custom injection token uses this factory, which returns the product resource, which is the actual reference of this guy here. Nice. So let's now go and use this custom injection token into my style component. So let's go there. And what we have to do is actually inject the product. And if you remember, the injection token lives under the product details component, which is under SRC app product details. So let's fix this path. So we have it here, but it seems that we have a problem. And if we go here, yeah, of course, we didn't export that. So now we'll go to the style component. This actually works. And from the product, what we get actually is a resource ref. So infers the correct type. And now if I go to the HTML, what we can do is product.value, since this is my actual resource ref, and then using the JSON pipe. So let's go to the browser to see what we have. And if I click style, we can see that we managed to provide the selected product, the activated product into my style component. So let's do the same thing, but this time with another product and I will pick product nine. We can see that we have the product details. And if I click style, we are setting the same state using a custom injection token into a children route. Nice. And since we are now focusing into the custom injection token, how about if we use not a custom, but an injection token provided by the Angular framework, and this is the router outlet data. So I have reverted the code. I no longer have here the provider. And what we have now to do is to focus mainly into the HTML. And here we have the product and we have to grab this product. So let me collapse this guy. We have to grab this product and somehow provide that 
here into the router outlet. And we can do that by using the property binding of router outlet data. And then here I will simply have my product. No more than that. And now we expect the children route to have the option to pick this one, the provided data that we have added into this property. So let's now go into the color component. And here I will do the following. I would like to inject the router outlet data and the router outlet data is from the Angular router. And now I know that this one has the actual product, but of course we do not have the type here. But as developers, we know what the type is, so we can cast that. And this could be a signal product. And why signal product? So if we now go into my product detail component, what we can see is that we send here the product. This is the type, but if we go into the definition of the router outlet data, we can see that this one is an input signal. So that's why we have to cast that as a signal product. And now if we go to the HTML and remove this comment, we have the product. This is a signal. We invoke that using the parentheses. And now if I go to the browser and click products, pick any product, go to the color, and we can see that by using the router outlet data injection token, we are setting the state from the parent component to the children route component. So let's do the same thing, but this time pick another one. I will go with product 11, click color, and we can see that we have the correct state shared from parent to children routes. So this is what I wanted to share with you today. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and do not forget to subscribe and click the ring bell. See you in the next video.